This is an X-ray of a hip which confirms the presence of a fracture. The patient is 73 and suffering from osteoporosis, unaware that 30% of her bone mass had been lost until the fracture occurred. Every GP in the country will have seen this sort of X-ray because one in every three women and one in every 12 men over the age of 60 can be expected to develop a fracture as a direct result of osteoporosis. Osteoporosis, in short, is already a serious problem. There are approximately 323 million people worldwide over the age of 65 years, but the population is growing and aging. Over the next 50 years, that figure is set to rise to 1,555 million, creating a greater prevalence of the disease. In the UK alone, there are more than six times as many fractures as there were in the 60s. And by 2025, fractures in Europe are set to rise by another 80%. If we don't do something now to address this situation and reduce the high incidence of osteoporosis in the elderly, then what is already a serious problem will become a crisis. Osteoporosis is a disease of the skeleton in which bone mass is lost and that bone which remains changes in structure. This is a section of a healthy bone. This is a section of an osteoporotic bone. It's far less dense and the structure has changed, making it very weak, brittle and hence liable to fracture. The disease cannot be cured, but it can be prevented. Loss of bone mass and changes in structure usually occur over a number of years. Find the patients early enough whose bone density is lower than it should be, either because the patient is losing bone mass at a high rate, or, in the case of patients under 30, because they're not forming it in the first place, and it becomes possible to identify those people who might develop osteoporosis in later life, and prevent it. Osteoporosis is a major common disease. There is an epidemic of osteoporosis. The main consequences of osteoporotic fractures are disability, pain and death for the patients. For the system, the main consequences are blocked beds, massive expenditure and for the social system and for the relatives, further massive expenditure. One in four patients who fracture their femurs will die and a significant proportion of the rest will require residential care or nursing home care or their relatives will have to provide equivalent care. DEXA scans provide precise bone mineral density readings essential for monitoring and caring for patients with osteoporosis. But DEXA is also expensive and consequently equipment is scarce. There are under 100 systems installed throughout the UK as a result, many women and men remain undiagnosed. This is the heart of the problem, and it's a problem to which a solution now exists with the advent of quantitative ultrasound, or QUS. The ultrasound technique being portable and, and rapid is extremely um, useful for measurement in, in a busy clinic environment. You're talking of a measurement of only a couple of minutes that could be undertaken by a relatively unskilled operator. Uh, we have done studies ourselves in a GP environment and we have been able to measure um, you know, several subjects within an hour so from that side it has been very acceptable to to the patient and also to the to the staff within the GP practice. This system, the Cuba Clinical, is a dry contact ultrasound bone analyzer. It's much less expensive, smaller, lighter, and easier to use than a DEXA system. But it can nevertheless provide accurate measurements of bone density, elasticity, and structure. And the cost of the system, and the speed with which scans can be performed, is such that Cuba Clinical makes routine measurements of bone density in the GP environment both feasible and affordable and more cost-effective than CRC referral. Furthermore, prospective data from a recent clinical study has demonstrated that the Cuba Clinical can predict hip fracture. How does the Cuba Clinical work? 
Well, the use of ultrasound to measure bone density isn't a new idea. But many other systems relied on only measuring the velocity with which an ultrasound signal passes through bone. Velocity of sound can measure elasticity and density of bone, but not structure. The Cuba clinical system succeeds because it measures not just velocity of sound, but also the broadband ultrasound attenuation in the bone. BUA is proven to be an accurate way of measuring bone density and structure. An appropriate anatomical insert to position the foot is selected. Ultrasound gel is applied to the patient's foot to act as the coupling medium. And the ultrasound transducers are then placed in contact with the heel. In all, three readings are taken, with the gel reapplied each time. The whole process takes just a few minutes, and the results are both immediate and clear. The Cuba Clinical Windows-based software package enables the GP to view all patient measurements on a normative data graph, as well as offering the option for graphical analysis in comparison with population means and peak bone mass. In this way, the Cuba Clinical ensures that only those at a high risk of osteoporosis are referred for a DEXA scan, and that all those patients which fall into that category are correctly identified. For those people who already suffer from osteoporosis, the arrival of Cuba Clinical and widespread screening to identify at-risk patients has come too late. They will live with the constant risk of fracture. Cuba Clinical is not expected to replace DEXA, which will continue to be vital for assessing and monitoring patients with osteoporosis. But it is designed to meet a need which DEXA cannot. Low-cost, accurate screening of all patients in the community. Without that screening, the current crisis of osteoporosis may well become a tragedy.